So this is part two of our look at the channel strip. We're going to be dealing primarily with dynamics processors in this section. So if I go to a de-esser on a vocal channel, a de-esser is basically a frequency-dependent compressor whose job is to remove the ps -ps 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 s's that humans make when we smack our lips together and s and stuff. Some people do it more than other people do. Um, some microphones make it worse out front than others do, and so your job is definitely going to be to make sure that you can get rid of that. Now, what this basically does is it detects a frequency and it removes a frequency. What makes this unique is that the M20D's de actually has a separate frequency for both if you want, which is normally not possible. So this is the threshold. This is the point at which it will start removing those S's in level. This is the primary detection frequency, which is that green line. And this guy here is the removal. So you're seeing the amount of cut, you're seeing the bandwidth, and you're seeing your frequency. So if we listen to a vocal here, you are the nightingale turn this guy on, I hear before dark's deep. You are the voice that wakes my morning. So that's about seven and a half K. And you are my best fish tail. You the wish so you can see that I is the amount of removal. So you can make it very subtle. You can make it very strong. Sometimes you'll need both. Uh, but the fact that this has a separate detector and a separate cut frequency means that it gives you flexibility that you're never going to find in another mixer, even twice the size of this, footprint-wise. So let's move over to the kick drum and look at a bunch of other stuff in terms of dynamics processing. So we'll mute the vocal, bring the kick back up. All right, so starting back at the top, here's our kick. And you can tell there's some snare bleed in there. So let's gate out that snare bleed using the gate. Cool. So the decay determines how long it takes it to close fully, of course. And the attack time determines how quickly it wakes up and opens the gate. So that's good. Let's look at a Dyn EQ. So much like the de a dynamic EQ is something that either adds or removes EQ based upon a threshold. So with the normal EQ, if you add 3 dB of 3K, it always adds it, right? The problem, though, with a drum or something is that if there's off-axis bleed, sometimes I might want the kick drum to have some extra 5K point in it, but I want to remove that when the snare's playing. So we can try that here. So with this guy, this here is the low threshold, meaning the amount of pull the amount of removal. This here is the upper threshold, the high threshold. This is the amount of removal of that frequency, and this is the amount of addition of that frequency. So if I want to try to pull some extra 5K in, but have that stuff suck out once the kick drum stops playing, let's try to create that here. So there's extra 5K, a lot of it, but you see it's removing it when it's not playing. It's a completely different effect than just EQing it simply. Without it. So it's another one of those effects that can be extremely subtle or be very in your face. And this is another fantastic dynamics processor that you're not going to find in another mixer even four times the price. So if we go down further from there, we go to the sub boost. This is yet another dynamic EQ. Only this one's job is to add low frequency energy to a signal. It's actually doing something very similar to what we've often done in the studio, where we've added a sine wave at 50 or 60 hertz to make a thin kick drum sound bigger. This one here, this is the boost frequency, so you can see it goes from 60 to 90 hertz. This is the boost level, and there's the threshold. So if we turn the level down here for a second and listen to the kick drum again, turn this on. Here's the boost. Yeah. It's got a lot more authority now if you're listening on speakers with some bass in them. And as you start to crank this up, you can see that it changes. It doesn't have as much energy until you're down in the 60 to 70 hertz range. So this is a lot of what we used to do in the studio, and I still do on mixes. So that's a very, very powerful feature as well. So you're getting the idea that it's not just You've got some EQ and a couple compressors. These are really serious pro dynamics tools on your channel strip in the M20D.
Now, right after that sub boost on this track, you have a compressor, a super functional compressor that works great for holding back signals or also making things punchy. So see here, you can decide where that goes. There's your threshold. Less compression, more compression. This isn't the end of the dynamics possible in the M20D. Check this out. Remember how I mentioned that you could go and change algorithms and entire DSP routing scenarios? Well, if we go and pull up a routing scenario that has a multiband compressor in it, that's going to get rid of all this cool work we've just done to the kick drum. So check this out. The kick drum is going to get small again. So the kick drum is going to be anemic again. Nice and small. However, what a multiband compressor does is it splits the audible band into four separate ranges and lets you compress them separately. So this is the level of each band, and this is the threshold. So if I turn my kick drum on again, a little bit of compression, but not much. I really want to compress this mid-range because there's a lot of thump in there. So maybe we'll Pull this guy quite a bit down. There we go. Compress him, but add him a little. There we go. Mid-range guy. We're also going to compress him too and change that ratio up to like two to one. There you go. He's pulling a little bit. And a little bit of top. Now, in two seconds, here's where it was flat. Pebble. Now it's got some girth. Right? Now remember, you can save your own presets for all of the processors inside the M20D. So I made my own for this song, and I called it Believe Kick. So it's literally just the same processor. I just took a little time to tweak it. And now you get this. Yeah. Authority. Without it. With it. So hopefully you're getting the idea that the dynamics processors inside the M20D are not just the garden variety, run of the mill, here's your little compressor that can hold back some signals. These are professional tools that you can use to make all of the input signals coming into your console hit like a ton of bricks out front. <laughs>